Welcome back to part three. In this part, we'll introduce more complex logical statements utilizing the logic operators for negation, and, and or. Recall that the negation operator flips the truth value of a statement. True goes to false, false goes to true. In C, as in many programming languages, the single exclamation point is used for negation. This is reminiscent of the inequality operator that we saw before, that used an exclamation point in front of the equals sign to denote not equals. For example, the equality expression A equals B can be negated as such, not A equals B. Inequalities can also be negated. However, it's better to use the simplified versions of both of these conditions in practice. The not equals is better expressed with the inequality operator, and a less than or equal to operator becomes a strictly greater than operator. The real value of a negation operator is when you use it with a flag variable. A flag or Boolean variable is simply a variable that's intended to hold the truth value true or false. Unfortunately, ANSI C has no built-in Boolean variable type, as a lot of other programming languages do. Instead, any numerical value can be treated as a Boolean value. Zero represents false, and any non-zero value represents true. Three, 3.5, 3.14, and even negative 10 are all true values. However, for simplicity, we'll go ahead and use the convention that one is true. Though you can use double variables for Boolean values, it's best practice to only use integer values as Booleans. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. Let's go ahead and create a flag variable to indicate if somebody is a student or not. Again, to do so, we'll go ahead and use an integer value. Now to set this value to true, we simply assign a value of one. If they're not a student, we can set it to false or zero. Then later on in the program, we can use this Boolean value in a conditional statement. Note that we use the variable itself in the expression. We didn't check for equality against one because that would be wrong. Any non-zero value is true. Likewise, we can use a negation operator on this. If the value is false, then this print statement will be executed. We can make more complex logical statements by combining comparisons using the logical AND operator. Recall that two ampersands are used to denote the AND operator. And the combined expression evaluates to true if and only if both operands are true. Here's a full example. In the first condition, the customer must have a subtotal of at least $50 and be a preferred member of our company in order to get free shipping and a 20% discount. Otherwise, if they still have a subtotal of at least $50 and are not a preferred member, they still get free shipping, but not the discount. Finally, if their subtotal is less than $50, they get neither the discount nor the free shipping. The logical OR operator is denoted using two vertical lines. Again, sometimes these symbols are referred to as pipes or Sheffer strokes. The combined expression evaluates to true if at least one of its operands is true or both evaluate to true. Here's a simple example. If the customer is a student, or is a preferred member, or is both, then a discount is applied. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Let's go ahead and check for a range on an integer value. Here we're using a logical AND. If the value stored in A is strictly greater than 10, and the value is strictly less than 20, then this will evaluate to true. For the value five, it'll evaluate to false. For the value 15, it'll evaluate to true because 15 lies between 10 and 20. And for a value of 25, it'll again evaluate to false. Here's another example. This expression involves two variables. If A is equal to B, and A is strictly less than 10, then this will evaluate to true. It'll evaluate to false if either A is not equal to B, or if A is 10 or greater. 
Here's another example. This mirror is the first example, but we've traded out the logical and for a logical or. This makes a huge difference. Now this expression will evaluate to true if either a is strictly greater than 10 or if a is strictly less than 20. That makes this a pretty useless statement because regardless of the value of a, whether or not it's negative five, 15, or 20, one or the other or both of these will be satisfied and it'll always evaluate to true. Let's look at the second expression again with the same change. That makes a big difference. This will evaluate to true now if the two values match or if A is strictly less than 10. One of the values that didn't work before was 20 and 20. Now the second expression will evaluate to false, but the first evaluates to true, making the entire thing true. And so the code will execute. We'll get even more exposure in practice in a subsequent part.